Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 41. And in this tutorial, we are going to talk about two built-in language constructs in PHP called include and require. Now, these two language constructs are actually very useful and they'll save you from typing out a heck of a lot of code if you use them correctly. Okay? So basically what they allow you to do is include code written in another file onto the file that you're working with at the moment or the file that you want that code to be on as well. Okay, so let's say for instance uh, I was making a header for my web page. Okay, uh, then uh, basically I could go ahead and code my header in another file which I've called header.php and then I could include it uh, exactly where I want it in my HTML code uh, on my actual home page and then I could go ahead and include that same header on every single one of my web pages so I wouldn't have to type the code out or copy and paste the code across all my web pages like I would have had to have done if I was just using normal HTML okay and this will work for PHP code as well so if for instance you had one PHP file that you wanted all of your core functions to be in you could go ahead and include all those functions onto the page that would use those functions and then obviously uh, be able to use uh, those functions across your index page and every other web page as long as you included your functions uh, file uh, so just to show you guys what I mean, let's create a header in this uh, header.php page and uh, as you guys will notice uh, this is basically my file structure at the moment. I've got my main page or my home page index.php and then my header.php file which is empty. So we'll create a header over here so we'll just put in uh, two heading tags or header tags and then we'll put a, he a heading one and ending heading one and we'll just say this is the page header okay so now we've got our header we can go back to our index page and as you can see this is all just uh, basic HTML if you guys don't understand uh, what's going on with this code then you need to watch my HTML series because I explain all of that uh, okay but for now let's go ahead and at the top of my body where I want my header to be I'm gonna go ahead and put in PHP tags and then I'm gonna type the word include and then my file that I want to include which is header dot PHP. Obviously make sure to uh, surround the file with quotation marks otherwise you're probably uh, not going it's probably not going to work it's going to get an error. Okay so there we go now we have our header on the page let's go ahead and just create some content so I'm gonna make a paragraph here and I'm gonna set this equal to um, or not set this equal to but I'm just gonna give some content here just saying this is the rest of the page. Okay, so now we have an index page uh, that should contain our header which uh, was coded in this file and then it should also contain a paragraph. So now when we go over to Firefox and click refresh, there we go, we've got our header and then we've got the rest of the page. Now the reason why this is obviously handy is because I could go ahead and then uh, save this as another file. So let's go about.php. So this could be my about page on my website. And let me just open up about.php. And uh, basically over here I could just go ahead and change uh, the content. So we can just say about page uh, and we'll just copy and paste that a few times to get it clear that this is the about page okay uh, and now if I go over to my about.php then I've got the same header here 
but then I've got my uh, different content for the about page okay so the reason why using an include file here was useful was obviously because we got the same header without having to actually uh, copy paste that code uh, from the index file to uh, over to my uh, about page uh, or my about file and the really nice thing about that is obviously if I wanted to change this header then uh, let's say I wanted to add navigation or something then I could go ahead and uh, do that over here and only do it once and it would be updated across all of my different pages so let's say I take out um, this is the page header and I just change it to page header okay now if I were using normal HTML I would have had to have changed that over here on my index file and then again over here on my about page but instead we've made our separate header page that we've just included so I've changed it once over here and now it should be updated on both pages so if I go ahead and click refresh we're now on about.php and we've got page header so that has been updated and if I go over to index.php uh, then we've got this is the rest of the page and we've got the same header so that has been updated as well now I've just gone ahead and used uh, like a silly little example where I was including HTML onto the page but if you guys had PHP code that you wanted to include uh, you could do that as well it would work just fine and then like I said uh, you could have all your functions all your core functions that you were going to use across all of your pages in one PHP file and just include them and be able to use them uh, on this page just because they were included or the file that they were written in was included okay now let's go ahead and talk about what the difference between include and require is and uh, the answer is not much actually because if I were to change include to require over here and uh, I could do the same thing for the about page although we're probably not going to use it so let's go ahead and just say require then uh, it still does the same thing that include does it is going to include this page or include this file onto my web page so if I go ahead and click refresh here I'm on index.php nothing's changed because uh, even though I didn't include the file I still required it so PHP still went, went and fetched all the content on this page or in this file and uh, included it onto the page so the only difference actually between include and require is when something goes wrong so let's say PHP couldn't find this file I'll go ahead and just uh, make a spelling mistake on purpose so we've got hater.php now uh, PHP shouldn't be able to find a file called hater.php because I don't have that in my directory uh, if I go back and click refresh now I'm got two, I've got two errors over here okay so that just means that uh, PHP couldn't find the file that it required okay but if I go ahead and say include and the file and I go ahead and save this now and click refresh you can see I've got my two errors because something went wrong with the include but I still have the rest of the page printed out okay so the difference between include and require is that if require goes wrong if uh, the page or if PHP cannot find the file that it required then your page just gets killed nothing after that will be uh, ex executed or printed out or rendered in the browser okay but if you're using include then the rest of the code uh, on that page will still get executed or printed out now of course um, we've actually just got error reporting turned on uh, because we're testing this on our local computer and we want to be able to see um, any errors but if you were hosting this on uh, like a shared hosting company or something error reporting would actually be turned off so the user would never actually see these errors okay so if you were acquiring a file and PHP couldn't find the file 
uh, then the user would probably just get a blank page and they'd have to try and click refresh or something uh, and then hopefully everything would go right okay but that's all I have for you guys in this video uh, so don't forget to subscribe please feel free to leave a comment a like or share this video it's really gonna help my channel grow and I will see you guys next time